guest today is Mike Boki. He's the general manager of the Capitol Exhibit Center in Fredericton, New Brunswick. There is a major discussion going on right now in that community about the future use of the grounds. Mike provides some content, details, and history as to the dynamic of the current situation and potential for the future. It's uh, the hot topic of the exhibition grounds, relations with city. Um, it also ties to any city that's got historic property in its middle and what to do with it. That tension between new development and maintaining history and culture and all those things tourists like to come see. Yeah, it's not uncommon because, you know, fairs, you know, are, are typically, you know, 100 years old or, or very old or, or a lot older than 100. And, you know, communities have grown around them. So now, you know, fairs and exhibitions find themselves in property that's now valuable and they get pressure. And it's from the largest centers like Toronto to small centers like Fredericton. So I recently sat in a, on a national workshop and uh, we had a round table discussion where other fairs from across the country came in and uh, that were having some, some issues with their municipality and we're looking for ways to kind of improve that and work around what was going on. And uh, in this particular round table, uh, it, was, it was everybody's consensus that there was no relationship in worse condition right now than that was happening between the exhibition board here in Fredericton, and uh, um, but but it isn't uncommon. So so other municipalities have found a way to to value the land um, as as an exhibition as a fair and and work together to make it better for the people that live in their municipality. And uh, that's what Fredericton needs to do is to learn from the other municipalities that have said, all right, how do we make this this better? What does it have to be that we have we see the value there that you know far exceeds the potential value from from property taxes? And and there's lots of success stories out there, so they don't need to reinvent the the wheel. You know, um, the former mayor Brad Woodside was uh, you know involved with the mayor council across Canada. I'm sure there's contacts of networks on their end that they could speak with other municipalities who have made it work. Mm -hmm. And there are stories where it didn't work. And there's those stories typically where the fairs have moved, the uh, fairs have disappeared, that they couldn't handle the transition from a, you know, a, a high traffic location um, to move out to the perimeter of the city. And the fairs typically fail. And that's, that's you know, the big concern that we would have if, if that happened here in Fredericton. Yeah. Maybe to help bring the audience up to speed a little bit, we're speaking to the, the move by the City of Fredericton Council to um, change the location of the exhibition grounds, move it up to the Grant Harvey Center up uh, on the outside of town, and to develop for um, housing the, the exhibition grounds. So, but, but I didn't want to lose that thread. You have a story about um, going to some community where they use the exhibition as the landmark that draws all the traffic off the highway down into the downtown area. Yeah, the, the exhibition grounds are the landmark, and it is no different here in Fredericton. I mean, it is downtown. It's in the heart of the city. And yeah, recently we did a tour at the New York State Fairgrounds, and, and I first noticed as I was approaching the city of Syracuse that it, it, the signs weren't just Syracuse in 20 miles. It was the, the state fair in 20 miles. And as you got into it, uh, the city, uh, this was the exit to the, the state fairgrounds. And it was a landmark. And people use that to, to maybe if they weren't even going to the fairgrounds, it was still associated with whatever it was else in, in, that, in that area. And I was very impressed because you, know, you thought they right away, just looking at that, you seen that they recognized the value that the state fairgrounds offered that small, you know, relatively small city in Syracuse, yeah. and and we we do see that, and you see it in Canada in, in places when you're traveling through Toronto, you know, and you go down Lakeshore, you know, you're going to the C and E, yeah. whether you're going downtown or going to a hockey game or a baseball game, you're going to the the C &E. yeah. and E, and and you know, that would be the, the the ultimate success here is is to see Fredericton change their their approach and their image and their view of the exhibition grounds from, you know, what it is today to something that they're, they're proud to drive people down to. Yep. Um, to set this up a little bit, let's do some history. 
so that the audience can uh, have an idea of uh, the beginnings of all of this and and because while there's content or important con it gives us a context for what's going on today because without knowing that history it'd be like well why the fuss just close the x up i'm um, develop it right. and so that history is important because it probably will also tie to a future Right. You know, 20 years from now, what, what could the X look right. like? So let's start us yeah. off with the history. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's really there's two questions that I think that people need to, to, to be asking and to understand. And, and the first is, you know, is you know, the history with the property. Does the city of Fredericton even have the right to use that property or take over or repurpose that property? And then the second question is, is there a need to repurpose that property? So go back to the history of it. Do they have the right to to repurpose it? Um, they, 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 they clearly, they don't. The history is, is very simple. Uh, in the late 1800s, uh, there was a fire. The old exhibition grounds was, was on the east, easter side of, the, of town, and the, the, old, the old exhibition building burnt. So the, uh, the Odell family uh, provided the land where we currently are located, where the exhibition is currently located. It used to be the Odell Farm. And they provided that land for the exhibition to continue. And by 1926, they had actually provided the deed to the property. They gave the land to the exhibition uh, to ensure that there was always going to be an exhibition. There was always uh, agriculture and there was entertainment on the place. And at that time, when they gave it to the exhibition, what was the legal entity that they gave it to? It was the, the, it's still currently today, uh, Ag Society Number no. 34. Okay. Um, it was incorporated in 1889 under the Ag Society Act, and uh, it exists today. It is uh, it what makes up the membership in the Fredericton Exhibition Limited, and they continued to, to have the property deeded in Ag Society for the exhibition from uh, 19. Uh, 26 through to 1947. So if you set up 1947, the war is over. Uh, for the past uh, five years, the, there hasn't been an exhibition. The exhibition grounds were used to house troops during the war effort, and they were wanting to reestablish. You know, life was getting back to normal here in Canada. Um, the war was over, and that didn't, you know, the war didn't just end, and then everything went back to normal. It took a while for that transition to happen. So you can imagine that during the war, there was no exhibition, there was no revenue coming in, and they wanted to reestablish it. And they'd been um, being billed for property tax during the war because there was provincial taxes on the grounds, and uh, you know, you assume that they probably had some back taxes during the war because no revenue with no exhibition, and they were coming up with a strategy that would allow the exhibition to get back reestablished and get going again for the people of Fredericton. And the, between the city and the board of directors for the exhibition at the time, they came up with a strategy that, uh, that if the land was in the city's name, that uh, in, in the 40s, the provincial government wasn't taxing uh, city municipal property. So they would get out of that tax burden if they just transferred the land over to the city's name. So on, on one document, the uh, the original lease, this is a this is a copy. In in this one document, it outlines uh, a transaction, and in the transaction, the Egg Society, the Exhibition Limited, transferred over the deed to the land to the city. In exchange, the city transferred over a perpetual lease. And said, all right, here, we'll put it in your name. And the city said, all right, we'll lease it to you forever. And in this document, it has some conditions, you know, to protect for the exhibition. It was that it always remained given to the city, but it always remained for the exhibition as wished by the Odell family. In the city, they said, well, we'll give you a perpetual lease. So as long as you exist, the lease will always renew. And uh, if there's no exhibition after three years, uh, that would be would basically break the lease, and uh, the city could then at that point, you know, find another use, another purpose for the land. Um, there's also a condition that uh, the exhibition look after the, the property and the land uh, as it's currently done today. The exhibition looks after everything from pavement to building repairs, and it uh, it says that. Uh, um, subleases 
So things like the Brandon Brewer lease or Tim Hortons or William Seafood, uh, that those all have to be approved by the city. And uh, it also says that the lease is at a dollar a year. So um, it basically lands deeded to the city in exchange. The city transaction is that there's a perpetual lease. So it was never, you know, it was never purchased by taxpayers. It was never intended that the city would have uh, the ability or right to repurpose the land. Uh, it was, you know, the city trying to work with the exhibition to make sure that it was there for future generations. And as it turned out, you know, by the 50s, the provincial government was uh, taxing uh, municipal property. Uh, there's a change in policy and uh, the land was never gifted back to the to the exhibition board. And, uh, you know, every 21 years when this goes up for renewal, part of the perpetual lease, um, there's a consideration, you know, what what if, what, what could the land be or is, is the best use? Why is it 21 years? You know, I don't know where the 21, <laughs> if that was illegal, a lot illegal, but that's what's in here. Sure. Um, and, and I think it's, it probably was a, they needed a mechanism where they could go back through and check and make sure that the conditions were, were sure. being, being met. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really just protection if there was a day when the exhibition, you know, no longer continued. Yeah. But what you find is today, you know, if you fast forward, you know, 60 years later, that, uh, 70 years later, that, um, the exhibition is actually stronger now, certainly stronger than it was after the war. Yeah. You know, the agriculture program is, is stronger now. The interest from the public, you know, has never been stronger. The interest in, yeah. you know, product, locally produced products and locally grown products, yeah. uh, how our food is, is, uh, is produced. Um, you know, this connection with farmers and consumers it really is. It's, it's as strong now as, as, it, as it's ever been. Yeah. Um, and then the exhibition programming, you know, the, you look at, at uh, 2017, you know, it had uh, record exhibits in in all the agriculture areas from the, you know, provincial poultry show, the provincial Holstein show, the provincial draft horse show, you know, they all the provincial goat show, all had record number of exhibitors. That's the exhibitors, of course, are farmers that are participating. Because of that demand and that interest, you know, agriculture has, uh, has has kind of it's changed. Yeah, yeah, we're paying more attention to where our food comes from and right. starting as to ask those, be. Ask those questions. <laughs> Back to the lease structure again. So it sounds like um, all of this happened at no direct cost to the city. That's correct. Yeah. And so the the city has no money in it. They just have this legal document structure. Um, no. has, has that legality of all of that to this day been tested? Does it still hold? Yeah, they've they've um, the city has has looked at it. Um, the uh, the current lease was to be signed in uh, on January first, uh, two thousand and eleven, and the city was studying to see if they had to to uh, to sign the lease or if they could be repurposed at that point. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they took an extra thirty months. It wasn't signed till the middle of June two thousand and thirteen while they reviewed their in-house lawyers and while they consulted other loyal lawyers to find out if this this lease could be broken and you know i have a, a, an internal document from the legal counsel from the city that uh, was uh, from 2012 that said that this is this, this the only way this lease would be broken is if the exhibition broke it if they didn't pay their dollar you know if they didn't have an exhibition you know, if they weren't looking after the properties. So, um, you know, shortly after that advice from the lawyers, um, by June of 13, the city had uh, taken that advice to heart and, and mm -hmm. signed the lease. So it seems to map out, <clears throat> the history of it seems to provide a pretty good context for today. Yep. So then that leaves the question as we move into current times, is that there's a almost like a new tension in and around development of the ex movement of the exhibition up to the Grant Harvey Center, yeah. and um, two questions maybe: Do you have any sense of where that, that tension or that dynamic? Um, I mean, it not tension is well, right. maybe it is yeah. negative, but it is a tension because yes. you, you're not working a complement. Yes. The city and you and the ex aren't working a complement with yeah. each other because the ex would look radically different right now That's if right. you were. Um, and are there examples of other communities in New Brunswick, Atlanta, Canada, where 
the municipality and the exhibition uh, found that like they learned how to dance together to make it better for the community as a whole. So first yeah. the, the tension uh, here and then examples of where they had their breakthrough and they're flying now. Yeah. Well, there certainly is, is no, um, there's no demand for for space. It's not people talk about, you know, is, is there is there a push because of the, the growth downtown? Well, the, the growth downtown is a planned growth. It's a it's a anticipated or hoped for or wished for growth for the population that would boost up our, our, our property tax revenues as people moved in. But there is no current need for the space. So I do not believe that the tension is based on on people needing places to live. There's lots of places to live here. We're not full occupancy. And there's still properties left to develop. You know, we're not, uh, you know, we're not, this yeah. is not the last, you know, barrier of spot of, of, yeah. of potential. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's driven by, by a push for, for, for demand, for space, for, for, for residential or commercial. I think it's a, it simply comes down to a vision uh, that goes back, you know, decades of, of what should be downtown or what their vision of what would look like. And I think it's a very narrow vision, and uh, it, it doesn't represent the people that, uh, that come and use the facility. Um, and it can't, because there's over half a million visitors a year use the facility as it is. Hmm. And you know, I just don't believe that any venue in the city of Fredericton that has that much traffic, that's that many events, you know, that they would have more demand or more value in in residences, so I don't I, I, I don't know what what it would take to to resolve the that tension between the municipality, uh, but it, it does start with with open and honest discussion, mm -hmm. and that open honest discussion is not taking place right now. Um, if it did, we would have been asked the simple question of what does the exhibition need, you know, before you determine that it could be moved, like when you say, like, what do you need? What do you need for, for infrastructure, you know, to get that size of population there? What do you need for yeah. um, potential revenue? Does it need to have more spaces where there could be another Tim Hortons located or another rental? You know, does it need to have, uh, you know, 100,000 square feet in barns or, or could this be done with 80 or, you know, yeah. ask the need. What are your needs? Then let us go back to our people, see if we come up with a solution, mm -hmm. and we'll present a solution that meets your needs. Mm -hmm. And that discussion has it's not taken place. So and that almost presupposes that a move is imminent. So right. Rather than, here's a community that's got something in their downtown core area that other municipalities would love to have. Right. And what's been missing from the conversation to a degree are, uh, what's the long-term vision for the X? Uh, because then that would replace the long-term vision for the X as a development thing. Right. But before we get there, there's an, another question. It might sound odd, but have, has the Agricultural Society 36? 34. 34? Yeah. Have they done anything to upset the city? Well, we, we haven't moved. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, because it's, it's not dancing together, and mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of not antagonistic, but it's not clearly communicating either. So uh, an obvious question for an yeah. outsider would be, well, what the heck did they do to get the city to treat them that way? Yeah, I, d I don't know. You know, maybe somebody does, and I'd love to hear what, what it is. <laughs> but I'm not aware of anything specific that caused this rift between. I think there's certainly uh, there's been a history of a different vision for the place. Um, but this the exhibition has tried to meet the needs from the city. The city said they needed to see outside consultants create that vision of what the place would look like. So in the last six years, the city or the exhibition has hired not one, but two consulting firms hmm. to, to put down their vision of what the exhibition should be, could be on paper, on a document to present to city council. Hmm. And when that wasn't enough, the city said they still didn't, you know, the vision didn't match their vision. So, uh, we went back and the, the exhibition hired, you know, uh, a, a firm, an architectural firm, to turn that vision into to drawings. And okay, so an uh, artist rendition of right. it. Yeah. 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 So we took that vision on paper, which are a bunch of words, yeah. and, and basically turned it into... Pretty it up. Yeah. We said, all right, here's what the vision is. Let's, let's put it down in, in yeah. you know. So we've met... You know what the city's come back and said well we want to see a vision well 
I mean, heck, here's his vision. Yeah. But but you get. Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.